Hi there, it's Rob from Onstage Lighting. Welcome to another one of our QLab tutorials. In this one we're going to look at uh, the differences between QLab 2 and QLab 3. Uh, the version 3 has been uh, much trumpeted, there's been quite a lot of news about all the great new things it can do. And um, there's quite a lot of information on that. What there is less information for those people who are using QLab uh, 3 for the first time is for those people who understand QLab 2 and just want to make a quick transition and to try and find where the things that they're used to have actually gone. So let's have a look at that. So let's have a look at the interface then. What we're looking at at the moment, as you probably know, is the QLab 2 interface. Um, it's a light grey colour. Um, you're fairly familiar with a series of icons, um, the toolbox down the left hand side, the inspector at the bottom, um, and if you remember these all toggle on and off by these buttons at the top. Uh, there's also a way, a switch, light switch, which takes you through to your preferences. Um, the QList is um, fairly self-explanatory and people who know QLab know this QList quite well. Moving on over to QLab 3, um, it's obviously a much darker interface, uh, more sort of high contrast. Um, in terms of interface, I think it can be quite daunting in terms of the colour and the lack of colour, in fact. Um, lack of colour for the icons, the icons are all grey, and so you, although they're reasonably uh, easy to decipher, they can be a bit harder to decipher when you're looking quickly um, at different things. Um, like, for instance, looking for audio cues, looking for video cues, um, looking for fades, audio fades and video fades. So slightly differently now, instead of having the toolbox down the left-hand side, uh, when we have the, uh, the toolbox open, uh, we have it along the top here. And you've got all these different icons. The first icon is obviously an audio cue. These two in the box here are audio cues because one's an audio uh, object and one's a microphone cue. Um, the next two are the video cues, so the video cue and the camera cue. The thing about QLab 3 is it differs slightly to QLab 2 is that there's no diff distinction between um, the animation cue and the fade cue. So basically uh, the audio fade cue and the animation cue used to be separate and now instead there's this single cue which is called fade um, and the fade basically uh, then works on whatever the cue happens to be. So if it was an audio cue it would fade the audio side of things um, and on the video obviously you can change um, the video stuff as well, so the opacity. So that's quite, um, quite a change and you can tell the, uh, the fade cue from that little sort of faders icon there. Some of the other icons, um, you can hover over to find the tooltips for them. Uh, so they are kind of easy to understand. They just uh, sometimes can take you a bit of uh, getting used to compared to the old ones, particularly with the, uh, the audio fade cue being this sort of yellow and sort of uh, lavender coloured uh, pot shape. That was quite easy to find in a cue list. So the cue list is very much the same as it always was. Uh, you have obviously your fade uh, type or your cue type down the side, your cue numbers. Um, and your names and stuff. Now what happens when you put a fade in now, um, instead of the fade cue uh, having no name, it actually uh, calls the cue fade and then the name of the cue that you've targeted. So there's one less thing to have to do there. The actual uh, cue is named for you, whereas it wasn't in the old version of QLab. Down at the bottom we have the inspector again, quite similar, most of the controls are there, they just have been given a bit of a spruce up and a bit of a change. Um, there are extra tabs because there are more things you can do in QLab 3. Uh, if you know about QLab 3, you'll know that the things you can do include uh, the use of uh, the audio plugins on the Mac, so you can change things like the EQ and various other audio stuff um, directly within the uh, using the plugins, and you can also animate them using the fade cue as well. So that's one thing where there's additional, additional things. Um, they won't be available if you don't have the Pro license, uh, but there are additional things down in the inspector that you can do. The other interesting thing about QLab 3, as you may know, is the, um, the surfaces, which are the video uh, control and output side of things, and also the, uh, the video uh, soft edging and stuff, edge blending. So the, all these things happen back down, into the, down in here in the, in the inspector, uh, and you'll find that that's, um, that's fairly self-explanatory once you've um, worked out the new things that QLab 3 can do. The right hand side of the screen's changed slightly in that um, you don't have these different little sort of drawers that open up anymore for the cue lists and for the active cues and that. But you have this pane here which gives you one or the other. So you can have your main cue list there um, and your other cue lists down the, in the listed like, as they were before on the, on the side of the cue lab. Um, and then your active cues is under this other tab. Again, all these things are act, uh, activated by the um, 
by the views bar, so you can look through all of these different things. One change to the interface of QLab 3 is when you're trying to set up your things like your outputs and various things like that. Um, the settings can obviously be gone through via the QLab and preferences um, as usual, but also there's a little uh, cog icon down the bottom right hand side and it flips the installation over um, and then you can see the same kind of things that you're not usually seeing in your workspace preferences. Um, that's just a, there's also a little toggle down here to turn on and off the queues. Um, and the active queues and the queue list. So there's a little toggle down there. On the left hand side, there's also an option to go between the edit and show mode. So basically the edit window gives you all of the properties and uh, inspector and things like that. And the show mode just kind of locks them away um, and stops people from being able to access them. One thing that you might want to know is wh where is the load to time uh, control gone? That's not totally obvious to start with, but if you hit Command and T, you'll find that the load to time comes up, and then you set your time or type in your time and then hit Done, and then it will load up your list as before. I think that was the thing that took me the longest to find when I started on QLab 3. There's also two other new windows in QLab 3 as well, which are helper windows, one of which is the audition window. So what that does is it actually, when you're using video content, it actually previews the video content of a particular output. Um, uh, on the, in the screen here, um, a video output. There's also a time code, inbuilt time code window as well, which was something that we didn't used to have before. We used to have to run a separate time code app so we could see what um, the time code was running at the time. So there's just a few extra things there. QLab 3 also has additional little features like it will auto uh, black out the desktop backgrounds, uh, which we used to always have to set a black JPEG to being the back, uh, back screen so that if uh, the installation failed, uh, we could always come back to a black screen. Well, um, QLab now does that automatically. So that's it for our little tour around uh, QLab 3 and the differences between QLab 3 and QLab 2. The thing to do really is to have a look at the new tabs and the things that are available on the tabs and have a bit of a play around. There are some sort of back-end things in terms of organisation of outputs and that which are quite uh, exciting and quite interesting, um, but it's one of those things you need to go and have a bit of a look around and see what there is. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as the uh, the old QLab, really, in terms of the interface. It just looks quite a lot different um, and has additional functions which you can find in the tabs of the inspector or in various parts of the preferences. Hopefully that's been useful to you, and I'll see you again soon.